Hello everyone, I'm Naughty Rice. Today we are going to make the simplest Chinese rice wine or jiu niang. It's actually a kind of sweet taste sparkling wine. What I think the most amazing about jiu niang is that the sweetness comes from the rice itself. It is the biotics that transfer the starch in rice into sugar during the fermentation. Actually, most Asian countries have their own rice wine, like koji in Japan and makgeolli in Korea. Though the fermentation temperature or time they need it is little different, they are all relatives. And one thing in common is that they are very healthy and full of good bacteria, just like yogurt. The traditional method of making Chinese rice wine usually includes a lot of clean and sanitizers work because the fermentation process is so fragile that the rice can simply be polluted by some bad bacteria. But the method in this video is almost the simplest way I found to make rice wine. The whole operation time is within six minutes, except the time waiting for the rice to cool down. And I promise you that you will enjoy the wonderful taste of jiu niang just a few days later. So let's get started. First of all, we need a transparent cup so that it will be easier for us to judge the fermentation. You can also use a glass jar with a lid, which would even be better. Then add rice or sticky rice into it. Make sure it is below two-fifths of the volume of the jar, otherwise the rice gonna run out of the glass after fermentation. After washing the rice, which I haven't shown in the video, add water to the jar to cook the rice. The amount of water is 1.2 times the weight of the rice. For example, 240 grams water for 200 grams dry rice. So the weight should be 440 grams in total. And then we steam it. If you use a glass jar, you can simply steam it with the lid on. But don't twist the lid, otherwise it's going to be very hard to open it again. Usually takes about an hour until the rice is down, but we have to let it cool down to below our body temperature. Then add Chinese wine yeast. Sometimes it might be called Chinese yeast ball or rice leaven, and can be found in Asia grocery or online. It's actually rice flour mixed with special herbs and is full of probiotics. You will get it either in ball shape or powder, they are the same thing. I personally prefer powder because it's more convenient to use. If you use a bowl, just crush it between clean wraps into powder. To make the Chinese rice wine, we don't need much yeast. A small bag like this goes a long way. This 8 gram yeast bag is for 2 kg rice. You can calculate the exact amount you need, but my scale is not capable of very high precision, so most of the time I just use one quarter of the yeast bag. I might sprinkle it too much, but nothing big deal. And don't forget seal the rest of the yeast. The shelf life of it is as long as 18 months. If you put it into the refrigerator, it can last for several years. Then we pour some drink water to help the yeast better distribute. The amount of water is one quarter amount of the weight of the dry rice. For example, 50 gram water for 200 gram dry rice and finally seal it with the lid or clean wrap. Let the jar sit for 3 to 5 days on the room temperature of 20 to 30 Celsius or 68 to 86 Fahrenheit. If the rice floats, it shows your rice when it's done. At this time, it tastes very sweet. If you prefer more alcohol one, let it sit for another 2 to 5 days. Every time I serve rice wine to my friends, they are amazed by the nature's sweet taste of it. So what happened on earth in our little glass jar? As we steam the rice, the glass jar together with the lid is disinfected by the steam, so we don't have to sanitize them again like the traditional method usually does. Then we have to wait with patience until the rice completely cooled down to add the rice leaven. Otherwise, most biotics in the rice leaven gonna lost their working ability. But still, there is also some lactobacillus in our rice leaven. They are the only creatures here who are very happy with high temperature. And this is the reason why sometimes the rice white tastes very sour. So, we should always wait until the temperature at least below our body temperature. Then sprinkle the rice leaven. 
eleven and add some drinking water to disperse them evenly. In this way, your tech is gonna work properly and digest the starch in rice and turn it into sugar. One thing to mention. The fermentation process will produce some gas, so using a jar with an airlock would be great. But if you don't have one like me, just remember to keep the jar enough airtight. Otherwise, bad bacteria in the air gonna slip into the jar, take part in the fermentation, grab the food from our tiny biotics. And finally, we're gonna see there is some black mold, and it shows the rice is tainted and shouldn't be eaten anymore. In most cases, there is no mold can be seen on the finished rice wine, but sometimes Sometimes white mold can be found on its surface and looks just like Japanese koji. It's fine, it shows the biotics are very active, but if you really mind, try sprinkling less rice leaven next time. And remember, during the winter time, where the weather can be very cold without heating, the little creatures will slow down their work, so don't forget to wrap them with some blanket or keep them in warm places. But in summer, it only takes two to three days for biotics to transfer all the starch into sugar when the rice white tastes the sweet. Then the fermentation still goes on, and it's on the rice leaven gonna transfer the sugar to alcohol, and the rice wine can finally reach to 10 to 15 percent alcohol by volume (ABV). When is it ready to eat? Well, really depends on your personal preference. I really enjoy the sweet taste of it, so I will eat it at the very beginning when it's almost alcohol-free. And if you can't eat at one time, just move it into the refrigerator to slow down the fermentation process and keep it. At the exact taste you want.